So I'm introducing this video a little different. I'm obviously in different clothes than what I shot the video in. Um, this video was actually done a couple of days ago. We decided not to publish it at the time because I don't know, I just, we got different results than what others had previously been talking about surrounding this whole MacBook Pro M2 SSD controversy. But I think it's worth kind of bringing up and showing you guys anyway. So that's what we're gonna do. Just know that we got different results than other people. I don't know which one's right and which one's wrong. If more people are getting different results than us, then I'm guessing that's obviously the right answer. But I just wanted to show you our experience on the whole SSD thing. And then you guys can formulate your own opinions. And of course, let me know in the comments because I would love to hear them. There has been a lot of talk over the last few days about the new M2 MacBook Pro and how some models might have slower SSD speeds than the M1 MacBook Pro. Now, the specific model in question is actually the base 256 gig MacBook Pro with the M2 chip. And I actually happen to have that machine right here. And I also have the other M1 base model uh, with 256 gigs of storage. And so we're just gonna quickly run a few tests and see if in fact these new machines are slower than the last generation. And if you're sitting here wondering how or why this might even be possible, I'll link to the full article down in the description below. But some reviewers have actually discovered uh, during a teardown video that the 256 gig base model M2 actually has a single NAND chip instead of two NAND chips, just like in every other model and even in the M1 MacBook Pro. Now, why could a slow SSD be kind of a big problem? Well, if you're running the base model MacBook Pro like we have here, which already already has an incredibly low amount of RAM at eight gigs for a 2022 machine, um, your MacBook Pro is going to need to rely on virtual memory via your SSD, if and when that memory actually becomes full. It's then going to transfer between RAM and virtual memory via your SSD. So depending on what you're working on, your machine could be incredibly slow. Considering your machine only has eight gigabytes of RAM, I'd imagine this might be happening a lot more than you think, again, depending on what you're doing. So let's go ahead and test out if the speeds are in fact slower on the M2 chip. And there are two tests really that we can kind of see or get an idea of whether or not this is true. And the first thing is we can run a benchmark. And to do that, we can use the Blackmagic disk speed test to test out the read and write speeds of the SSD under five gigabytes of stress. And our test found that this new M2 MacBook Pro has a read speed of 1459 megabytes per second and write speeds of 1644. Now, if we compare that to the M1 MacBook Pro, you get 2602 for read and 2012 for write. And as you can see by the numbers, the M1 is in fact putting up faster SSD speeds than the new M2. Now, when testing a real world scenario, like transferring files to and from an external drive, for example, we actually got different results with the M2 chip, actually putting up the faster speeds. Transferring this 50 gigabyte file took roughly 40 seconds on the M2 and 59 for the M1. Now this was done with no other applications or anything running in the background. So then I decided to just open up a bunch of applications that I might use on a regular basis, as well as a bunch of Safari tabs, uh, just to sort of mimic a real work environment. And the results, still leaned the M2's way with the same folder transferring in 43 seconds compared to a minute and 20 seconds for the M1. Now the M2 was not affected as much by the added stress of the other applications and the other tabs and everything else going on compared to the M1. So overall, I think it's gonna be really tough to tell whether you can tell a difference in real world scenarios that are kind of custom to your workflow. I noticed that things would start to drag and slow down a bit when working in multiple pro applications like Final Cut Pro, Lightroom, and Photoshop while doing other things like browsing the web, answering emails, or working on documents. This is something that's happened on my M1 and it happened on the M2. They both have eight gigabytes of RAM. And again, once that's used to its fullest extent, it's going to need to switch over to that virtual memory via your SSD. And uh, it they performed kind of the same. They were both pretty problematic when you had a bunch of things going on. Uh, so I do wanna point out that this is just one test and it still very may well be the case that the M2 does have a slower SSD in the base model only. Every other model is uh, seemingly going with two NAND chips and they are fine. But in this base model compared to the last base model M1, it does appear that in my real world testing, I didn't notice any huge differences, although we did get better benchmark scores on the M1. Again, this is just one person. It might change for other people out there, but I'd love to know your thoughts 
thoughts in the comments down below. What are you thinking about the new M2 chip? And of course, this whole SSD fiasco. Again, let us know down in those comments. This has been Down With Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.